Shade is the second of two brawlers making his way into the next Brawl Stars update, and today I'm going to see if he's any good as I put him 1v1 versus every brawler in Brawl Stars. Spoiler alert, <laughs> yeah he's good but there are a couple of big weaknesses. Shade is the last brawler in the Ghost Station trio with Gus and Chuck. He is an epic assassin brawler, so he should be pretty easy to pick up when he releases, but of course there will be an early access offer for a week early if you want to pick him up. And if you do decide to purchase anything in Brawl Stars, I would really appreciate you using Code Lex. It doesn't cost you anything extra, but it does help support me, my family, and this channel. Shade's main attack is actually two separate attacks that can be combined into one. When he attacks, he swipes his hands outward, in. Now each hand deals 1,600 damage, and if you hit someone where both of his hands come together, which is shown by a darker area, then it will deal 3,200 damage with a single shot, which is a lot. This shot can even attack through walls as well, which means no one is safe hiding from shade. Now he has 7,000 hit points at max level, and both his movement speed and his reload speed are very fast. However, he can move even faster when he uses his super. Now, when his super is used, you can dash a short distance, but the kicker here is that while in his super form, he can pass through all walls. Now, this form will last for about six seconds, and while he is in this form, he also gets a movement speed increase. Now, currently in the dev build, this extra speed from his super actually stacks, meaning if you use your super while you're in your super form, you get even faster, up to the point where it's after, it looks like it's broken. That being said, I don't know if this is supposed to happen happen or if it's just a bug. I think it's a bug, but I'm not sure. However, I am sure that you can get your movement speed buffed by equipping his first star power called Spooky Speedster. With this, whenever you hit someone in the middle of your attack with a 3200 damage, not only will you deal that ton of damage, but you also get a short speed increase. Now on the other hand, you can use his second star power for a 30% damage reduction while in your super form. Both of these star powers are actually very good, and while 30% while only in one form doesn't sound like a lot, if you're playing him right, you're actually going to be in your super form quite a bit, so it's a pretty good star power. His super charges just by being around enemies, similar to Buzz, and if you want to make sure to keep those enemies in range, well, you can use his gadget called Jump Scare. When used, it will slow enemies around him for four seconds to either keep them from getting away or keep them from chasing you, similar to Barley's gadget. But if they are getting away and they're just out of reach, well then his first gadget called Long Arms is what you need. With this gadget, when activated, his next main attack will have its range increased by 50%, and and I really like this gadget quite a lot. This one is more offensive, while the other is more defensive. Both of these gadgets and star powers are pretty useful and will have a place depending on how you kit him out, although none of these are really going to help him in today's tests. And speaking of, you want to see Shade Rex and Brawlers? Yeah, I thought so, so let's see how Shade handles the throwers. Shade is an assassin that deals massive damage with a single hit, yet you'll notice from some of these interactions that the throwers are way closer to beating him than they really have any right to be. The reason for that is because while he does insane damage, the time it takes for him to fire off each shot is incredibly slow. So I mean, yeah, he wins each of these matchups, as he should, but what about in a game? Well, it's, it's gonna be rough but not for Shade. Now, throwers thrive on when they're facing a brawler that cannot reach them. They can just sit back behind their wall and throw their shots. Those walls, though, mean absolutely nothing to Shade. He can pop a super and move right through them, so if you think you're safe as a thrower, then think again when Shade is on the map. In fact, he doesn't even need to go through the walls himself as his shots pass through the wall. So you can't even hug a wall as a thrower or else you're gonna be vulnerable, as well as charging his super. Now another group of brawlers that loves to use walls to their advantage are the tanks, so let's see how Shade does against them. Now again, Shade deals enormous damage, but he doesn't deal it fast, and brawlers like Bull deal more damage and he does it faster. Shade barely gets off a single shot before going down. Now he does get off a couple shots on Primo, but it's not nearly enough. Rosa doesn't have high burst damage, but her health wins the match. But Daryl has both, and he wins easily, just like Jackie does. And while Shade gets off his shots on Frank, it would take two more shots just to bring him down. 
BB, however, isn't up to the task, and Shade gets his first win in this set. However, Ash's rage builds up, and that damage proves to be just too much. But Hank, well, he can just take his time as it only takes two bubbles to win. Draco also benefits from that extra damage, and he reels off shots faster to get the win. Now, in a game, assassins normally don't like to go head to head with the tank, as it's one of the classes that give them trouble. And up close, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's not pretty, but it's not all bad news here. Shade has more range than many of these tanks, and so he can get the damage where they can't be fully effective on him. And on top of that, he can attack through walls, which will make some tanks need to give up their positioning advantage. That all being said, if you wander into the grass and meet a tank that's ready to go, it's most likely not going to end well for you as Shade, but tanks aren't really his main prey, so let's see how he fares against someone he will want to target, the controllers. Now the controllers aren't known for putting out a lot of damage, that's not mainly what they do. Well, except for Bo. He's more deadly than people give him credit for. But there are some, like M's, that in the right place do high damage, or even Griff, who can burst down pretty much any brawler around. But brawlers like Gale and Jean, well, they don't particularly enjoy assassins this close. But if the assassin isn't charging them, then brawlers like Mr. P can deal with him thanks to his double bounces. However, brawlers like Squeak normally wouldn't do well, but again, Shade shots are just really slow, and it's basically a tie. Shade clearly doesn't respect lose a Thor tie. Authority. How is it? How is it? Respect my authority. Respect my authority. Even Otis, who is normally a good counter with his super, dies too fast and loses. Willow may have a cool new skin, but that damage isn't going to cut it. But Chuck, well, he's up to the task and he runs away with this one. Both Charlie and Sandy give it a good try, but come up just short. And Amber tries her best, but sometimes your best just isn't good enough as my mother used to always tell me. Now Shade won most of these matchups, and in a game, if he can get to these brawlers, it's going to look a lot like that. However, getting to them is going to be the harder part of the job. Brawlers like Gale can keep him at bay, and with his slow shots, brawlers with turrets do pose a bit of a problem. However, putting a turret behind a wall doesn't really affect him very much as he can just take them out from the safety of the other side. All in all, the edge has to go to Shade, but that is assuming that he can get himself close enough to them. But with all the abilities that he has, he should be able to. However, the controllers aren't the only ones he's going to have to work to get close to because our next group is going to do everything that they can to keep the assassins away. Now, you would think that Shade would just absolutely dunk on these brawlers, but that was Brock killing him before he ever got off a second shot. And that's Piper. Okay, yeah, she didn't make it, but B made it a close one with her charged shot. Nani just straight up overpowered him, but Bonnie, despite her health, doesn't have enough in the tank to win. Belle got some help from that shield, and Mandy can fire fast, but both don't have the hit points to withstand the onslaught. Maisie, however, can fire shots much faster than Shade and wins, while Angelo, well, he takes forever to prepare each shot. And while Janet can fire fast, they aren't super powerful and she loses. So in a game, this is very much a classic case of just keeping your distance. If Shade gets close to you, it's not gonna be pretty. Now, some of these brawlers do have abilities to get Shade away, like Piper with her gadget or Maisie with her super, but it's still probably never a good idea to let an assassin get that close to you, so yeah. Just keep your distance and let your team deal with him while you pick off the other targets. Shade is an assassin, so naturally we want to see how well he does against his own class. And we want to see where he shines, where he fails, and... Oh, well, that, that's, that's a fail against Sam, who is kind of a tank, though. I mean, Mortis looks good here with that skin, but his reload speed is just too slow. However, Godzilla Buzz easily wins. Fang gets his shots off faster and prevails, and Miko is just really hard to beat in 1v1 matchups. Melody can't get her damage ramped up fast enough, but Lily and Shade are pretty evenly matched. Crow surprisingly comes very close to winning, but Leon just destroys him in a hurry. Cord puts out a ton of damage quickly, and Kenji does the same, winning easily as he avoids damage with his dashes. Now in a game, this is a tough one for Shade. Most of the other assassins just have incredible burst DPS, and while Shade hits harder with a single shot than they do, he can't keep it up.
That being said, it isn't going to be easy pickings for these other assassins. If there's a wall nearby, he can attack through it, and if he really needs to, he can simply super through the wall and still deal damage from the other side. Plain and simple is that Shade can do things that no other brawler can, and that is a big advantage for him. But if he is forced to stand and fight, it's going to be rough. And not just because of the slow shots, but because of another really big weakness, which I will show you in the next group with the damage dealers. Normally, an assassin can attack this class of brawlers, but they do have to be pretty picky when they do it. They can't just run up to a Shelly and start attacking, or else they'll end up like that. And the same is true for brawlers like Colt and 8-Bit, as the constant damage is just too much. However, others like Rico, well, they just don't have the health. And brawlers like Carl can't attack fast enough as they wait for the pickaxe to return, but here's what I wanted to show you. If you don't hit Shade's high damage part of his shot, and it's not always easy to do, then you are going to be in big trouble as Carl flips the script and takes out Shade easily. And this is an important point and a huge weakness for Shade. While he can deal a ton of damage, hitting that strong shot isn't always easy to do, especially on a moving target and with his slow shot animation. Now, brawlers like Clancy on stage one, he can still take out, but move Clancy to stage two, and it's not quite the same. And then at stage three, well, yeah, we, we know what happens. Now, Mo comes close, but still loses, and Spike faces the same fate. However, Surge gets off three shots before Shay can even get off two. And when Chester cycles to his third shot, yeah, pretty much nobody's beating him. Now, in a game, you are going to have to be picky with your targets. You can't just go willy-nilly and just run straight up to brawlers or you're going to be in trouble here. These brawlers just have too much power to do that. But if you play it a bit more carefully and methodically, you're going to get yourself in a good spot where you can strike with your super when the time is right. And once you get those going, it's going to be great. But make no mistake, this is not an easy matchup. Now for the last group of brawlers, we have the support brawlers. And yeah... I hear you, it's an assassin attacking brawlers that are basically healers, and he's going to absolutely dunk on them. Well, except for Pan. Now, Barry has no real shot here, but Max actually gets a win. Byron, of course, loses, but Ruffs and how fast he unloads his shots gets the win. Gray, however, isn't as fortunate, but Doug has too many hit points, and finally, Kit gives it a good try, but comes up one claw short. So then, you have seen Shade 1v1 versus every brawler in Brawl Stars. Is he going to be any good? In short, yes. But also, it depends. If you are just going to play Shade as a basic run up and attack kind of brawler, then no, he isn't that great. But if you play him to his potential, then he is going to be one of the hardest brawlers to get to and be incredibly frustrating to go against. His ability to get away, deal massive damage while peeking through walls, go over water, and cycle his supers getting lots of speed in the process, yeah, he's tough. And if you're a good player, you are going to be a force of nature with him, and you will probably be the most hated brawler on that map. He is going to enrage so many players with how slippery he is, and I, I can probably see a lot of phones getting broken because of him. So, yeah, he's going to be good. In fact, in a very good player's hands, he's going to be just near devastating. But in the average player's hands, he'll just be, he'll be all right. You're going to need to play him a bit more defensively in the start, but once you get your super going and you can start cycling them, then it's just going to be pure chaos for the other team as he is a massive threat. But perhaps the most important thing is that he is just so freaking fun to play. I appreciate you guys watching. Enjoy the update. Respect my daughter.